Hello and welcome to Simply Intoxicating. Contrary to the hype generated earlier, just before the GST 29th meeting, what has happened is perhaps unexpected. For the first time out of this series of meetings which we witnessed in the last 5-6 months, this is one meeting, the 29th meeting of the GST Council, it concluded without tangible results. All the issues have been referred to a committee headed by the Minister of State for Finance, Mr. Sipurta Sukla, and that committee is going to take into confidence the Law Committee, the Law Review Committee, the Fitment Committee, etc. However, the intention is to develop a different kind of GST regime focused on the MSME sector. MSME has been confronting serious issues for the last one year, ever since the GST was rolled out last year. And in the last one year, the MSME sector, of course, it was given certain relief in terms of threshold, in terms of rates, etc. However, it appears that the polls are around the corner and all the political parties are very keen. It's not the Union of India alone, other stakeholders in the GST Council, some of the states are equally keen that different kind of relief, perhaps a package, could be given to the MSME sector and the, they, in any case, they constitute a very large chunk of the tax base. So they deserve it also. So we have four domain experts with us who are going to tell us, give us different kind of insight into it, what happened, what it actually means if nothing tangible happened yesterday, whether something is going to happen at the next GST Council meeting. The 30th meeting is already announced by September 8 at Goa. So we will take a look at all those aspects. We have Mr. Eske Rahman, the additional Director General, uh, Director General of GST, CBIC, Ministry of Finance. We have Nimish Bhatia from BDO, he is associate partner, our knowledge partner also. And we have Mr. Sumedhat Majumdar, the former chairman, CBEC. And we have Dr. Sanjeev, he represents WASMIN, the World Association of SMEs. So he is going to talk about their interests, the kind of issues, the best practices. But let me start with Mr. Rahman first. What happened, you know? Yesterday, I mean, the nation was looking forward, particularly the MSME. If we go by the kind of legwork, the homework which was done by the states, all the CGST commissionerates, all the directorates, huge data, I believe, was sent to the CBIC and the council, and uh, they compiled it, and the finally the number of issues turned out to be in three digits. So, what happened broadly? I mean, yesterday. Uh, let me start by saying that is the first time that uh, the GST Council meeting is happening exclusively for MSME sector. It was initiative taken by our Honorable Finance Minister in the last meeting, 28th GST Council meeting, that we shall have exclusive one session for MSME matters. As you have seen, within a short period of 15 days, we had another GST Council meeting. The importance that is being given for MSME, micro, small, medium sector, is because after GST is implemented, what is the impact of GST mm -hmm. on this sector? Because there were reports that the, there is no growth on this sector. Okay. There is a growth on the large industry, there is growth on the medium, but on the uh, small and micro, it was reported that uh, the growth is not happening as is expected. Some of the uh, small and medium sectors uh, will have to re uh, on the tax planning side. For example, footwear components, they were doing the job work earlier. But now what is being heard and what is the feedback that has come to government is that some of the big footwear industries have called them and uh, they are working as a part of the big uh, footwear industry. Thereby, a bigger industry has almost taken over the small uh, job workers. So this kind of patterns was slightly disturbing. Keeping all this in view, our uh, finance minister uh, last time has proposed that we shall have an exclusive meeting on the mm -hmm. SME sector, MSME sector, and accordingly, the uh, according to his decision, uh, we have sent the DGGST. I am working for Director General of GST. Uh, we have been given the task of contacting the trade bodies. Mm -hmm. We have contacted uh, FISMI, we have contacted uh, Lagur Deokbati, we have contacted. Uh, uh, FICI, um, that is dealing with MSME, we have contacted with uh, many other trade associations and asked for what are the grievance points, what are the pain points on this, we have tabulated them. We have through the council secretariat, uh, uh, GST council secretary, uh, we have collected the uh, what are the grievances from the state's point of view, all state governments okay. uh, in respective states. 
have talked to their uh, uh, agencies, their uh, taxpayers. They have collected uh, the uh, pain points that were bothering about uh, MSME sector. They have given with their state comments also. What is the issue? What is the trade session? How does the trade want it to mitigate it? And what is the state government's comment on this? So all this has been tabulated. It has been uh, put up. Similarly, from the central government side, the DCGST uh, has collected uh, from many zones. We have 21 CGST zones all over India. Many of the chief commissioners have given their comments on the difficulty that is being faced. We have collected. With all this groundwork, we have presented the uh, agenda to the GST council meeting. Uh, in the meeting, uh, the union finance minister has requested each of the finance, state finance ministers to present their point of view. All the states have spoken. Many of the states have put forward uh, their points of view, their issues. Mm -hmm. So, if you would say, I will only talk about the big ticket yeah, items, yeah, which are yeah, most yeah. commonly only, only three, talked about, because almost points. around 400 to 500 day proposals no, no, are there. Yeah. So, what I can say is that uh, out of the uh, issues that were discussed yesterday, some of it I think in press conference uh, they are already uh, brought out, and uh, the main items that have come up for discussion yesterday could be as follows. I can mention, let's say, top 10 items. Is right. that okay for That's you? good enough. Yeah. So what I will do is, first five issues I will mention, maybe there can be some discussion. Yeah, then yeah, again, I will mention from uh, another five, so that there could yes. be a meaningful discussion on this. You can present your point of view sure. also on this yeah, issue yes. that were discussed. Uh, most common item that was talked about is the budgetary support. If you remember, some of the states at Uttaranchal, Northeast and Jammu Kashmir, some of the industries that were located there, uh, in the pre-GST and post-GST also, there is a DAPP budgetary support that is given. Right. So that fund availability disbursement was discussed. It said more support is required. Apart from only in the specified state, a view was also taken that MSME sector as such, if it discharges its uh, uh, GST in cash, then compensation may be given. Mm -hmm. Many of the states asked this, most commonly asked this question. They said uh, a central government can uh, give back that uh, the tax that is discharged by them. It was also said saying that part of the amount could be refunded back to them, the part of the duty that they are discharged. Another version also came that instead of uh, paying back the cash, we can say that whatever the tax that is discharges, the MSME sector, the taxpayer, in cash whatever discharges could be given as a credit to them. So that they can use the credit yeah. for, okay. uh, further to his process, thereby his uh, dependency on the cash will come down. But here I think that this one important point which emerges is this DIPP budgetary support scheme, all of us know that, that was a scheme launched in response to the excise exemption which was given in all these states. Correct. Correct. Area based. Area based excise exemption. Yes. Yes. Now that though the scheme in GST regime is gone, you know, it, it ceases to exist. In that scenario, this scheme was brought in, yeah. where the central government uh, on its part they, they are giving 58%. Yes, of the tax so states are supposed to give. I, yeah. I believe one of the states which has notified so far is Jammu Kashmir. Other states perhaps have not done it. I am not aware about no, it. There are two parts. Uh, one is that where already a commitment has been made that uh, for uh, up to 10, uh, sunset clause is there, there right. are 10 years from the starting. Right. So, which will be Paris 2019, 2020. Correct. Yeah. Till that time, what to do? We cannot give this benefit because otherwise the credit chain will break. Right. So the thing was, it was thought that a refund will be given and mm -hmm. if we continue, so they will pay and then they will get the refund. It was thought of and that is why it is came that the percentage you say so much from the center and from the state. Correct sir. No, but, but here the confusion but I am the, getting no, What I am saying, what I get the feeling from uh, what Mr. Raman is saying is that uh, after that also, because some will be closing in 2019. After that also it will be needed to be given, MSME. So for that all these three options. They wanted uh, permanent mechanism. Permanent they said that 25 percent of the tax discharged by them in cash shall be refunded back to them. It is, it is there in some of the ah. countries this system is there. At okay. least Malaysia I know for sure. But, yes. uh, but Malaysia I it's can't gone. say. It's, 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 it's just it's, there's for different reasons. Yeah. Right. But that was a good system because they are, they are also the, 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 since there was only one single rate for food items to this uh, all the items. Like so that's why they've said that system is there. So it is not that it's a 
uh, it cannot be done. It is. It is possible. So this so the various this, options. So this demand is a, is a part of incentive. You're it's saying. a part of incentive, incentive. because so basic incentive incentive say, yes, yes. GST duty hmm. discharge has to be done by in all taxpayers. Right. There is no difference in that. Right. After discharge is gone, if somebody has to be compensated, hmm. he will be compensated in the form of a refund okay. or as a kind of incentive. Oh, right. Okay. So in that model, what they yesterday they have discussed was because various versions were coming up. Mostly it is asked. They said saying that group of ministers is formed. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The group of ministers under the leadership of, under the chairmanship of uh, our uh, Honorable Ministers. Minister of State for Finance Revenue, mm -hmm. uh, he will be heading the team. Right. Uh, four state uh, finance ministers also are going to be part mm -hmm. of the. They are going to discuss these proposals in what kind of scheme will have to work out. Okay. And uh, it was also mentioned saying that this proposal that were discussed yesterday will have to be classified into how many proposals should go into the uh, law committee. Law committee mm -hmm. means where there are procedural changes, right. where there are simplification, mm -hmm. where there is something required to be done with respect to policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many proposals will have to go through the fitment committee? Fitment right. committee is that which decides about the rates and notification. Right. So some of the things which require the rate amendments, yeah. they will go through the fitment committee. These two committees will process this, flag these items, and with their analysis and opinion, they will put it to the group of ministers. The group of ministers will consider this. Probably, I mean, next meeting is scheduled, GST Council meeting mm -hmm. is scheduled. All of you may be knowing it came in papers. Also, 28th, 29th in Goa. Right. So before that, I think I mean the proposal will get uh, conceptualized. So, so what kind of scheme is to come out? Yes, all that right. I think they should make an announcement. So on this by budgetary, uh, you know, support scheme. You have some viewpoint. Yeah. So uh, see, uh, as far as it's about twenty-five percent of the refund of the tax that you've paid, it ensures that the credit chain does not break. That's number one. Second is yeah, you know, it's good to have a promise on paper, but somebody has to own it, own it up. Mm -hmm. And I think they've also indicated that if the states are not ready to go ahead with this, the center will own and give something out of their own kitty. So right. that's encouraging. So the center okay. has to pitch in here and, you know, but, release but the these center kind of again, funds. sir, if center is going to give away or lose their to, own revenue, that can be only to, as part of CGST. Yes. What about the SGST? In any case, the states will have an option not to join hands with the center. I mean, that is something which you, you do you visualize this kind of scenario, sir? Yeah, actually, you see. Um, Revenue is needed for all development activities. It is needed for the center, it is needed for the states as well. So we cannot sacrifice uh, revenue when you have reforms. So GST will not be successful if in the long run revenue keeps on falling down. Right. So that, has, that, that is my worry. I may be striking a discordant note here. Is that, you know, I, I think too many items have been suddenly reduced and uh, uh, the duty reductions have been there. So, of course, one logic is that, one argument is that, that is also quite valid, but we have to see that if the rates are reduced, prices will come down, consumption will increase, and once the consumption increases, then automatically your revenue collection, the tax base uh, also will increase. Because with less rate of duty, we expect that the compliance will be better. And your income. So, first two, three months after its implementation, there will be a hit in the revenue, but it will grow up later. So, but so what I'm saying is that all those things, what is that you have to have, after all, an officer, a revenue officer is first a tax officer. Is, 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 all those things yes, have to yes. be in mind. Well, what will happen? Like, now, why I'm saying is that, that right, now this is a very crucial year. <clears throat> Scheduled for your polls next year. Yes. Now, I'm not going to the politics, but I can see it. It's very transparent. I, I knew in yesterday's meeting not many decisions will be there. Because the, what will happen, the, the ruling party would like to give as much concession as possible before the polls. It happens always, till the time the guillotine is put by election commission. Yes. And the opposition party, thinking that we may also have a chance to have the power, so they will, not oppo they will oppose this. And the problem is that if the revenue is, if the rates are reduced too much, revenue comes short, shortfall, whoever forms the government next time, whether the present ruling party or the opposition, will have a tough time. Yes. Then he will have to put high taxes on already being talked about in customs and other things, and uh, so the revenue is needed. So then he will get a disadvantage. Of course, he will say that I have five years. So, and, but in the process, taxpayers and other so, development... So this revenue part, of course, he will also have some viewpoint. Ah, just one point, on, just to add to the consumption pattern that he's talking about. The latest statistics, it's very interesting, say that all the white goods that were uh, reduced from 28% to 18%, 
those companies have seen the highest uh, consumption rate in the last one year which is very interesting right i mean yes so it compensates for one part of the, of the uh, tax yes. collection mm -hmm. but yes obviously you have to expand the tax base and the tax payers base per se to uh, sustain uh, you know in the long run if you, you go through yes sir if you go this. through the uh, last quarter uh, there is a fall in the revenue sector so yeah uh, 2.86 uh, lakh crore was collected against the estimated 3.36 crore in the quarter april to june uh, wasme has been already uh, serving this small and medium enterprises for the last 38 years we have been already facing so many things uh, like simplification of the policy reducing compliance over there laws uh, technological issues are also there sir technical glitches yes, you know, in yes, terms sir. of compliance okay. yes sir. technological issues are also there sir so we have no, been but already you know, this uh, uh, yeah uh, means, uh, calling experts into the board and they are, uh, we are organizing any kind of payments uh, workshops and all these mm -hmm. thing so that they can be simplified sir no but here one suggestion you know this budgetary support yes, with sir. the gst council discuss yes. now uh, you know uh, one committee headed by minister of state is looking to it mm. now the state finance ministers are yeah. going to suggest what will be your suggestion if they invite you and ask you that okay tell us give us the prescription See, as far as the statistics is concerned uh, msme sector they have been already contributing to this gdp 37% of that and the creating 70 to 80 percent of the job so the uh, ministry or the government should focus on their issues the issues we have already raised over there and already given so the solution should be the uh, the simplification of the technologies over there simplification of the procedural issues so that they can tackle all this issues. no but you are you are you are giving them a whole basket of suggestions one big suggestion big ticket suggestion procedural uh, simplification. Uh, simplification should be there okay, sir. from your side yes, yes sir, sir. Uh, i just want to add one thing uh, uh, i fully support what uh, mr ramana said about the budgetary support it would read it in the context i'm just putting it in the perspective uh, you were also mentioning that, that yes, international sir. best practices if we see you go to the basics the threshold is generally in the range of equivalent to indian rupees 80 lakhs to 1 crore If yeah. you take most of the countries who are having successful GST, yeah. the idea is that I mean I'm only quoting Professor Richard Bird, who says that the small sector people we don't touch them much because first of all it is not cost effective, revenue wise it is not cost effective. Secondly, they're very cumbersome; they can't, they don't maintain records properly. And thirdly, it gives the opportunity to breed corruption. So you leave them aside. And, but here, India, for the obvious certain uh, compulsions, uh, the ultimately agreement was they will from excise side. It from 1.5 crore, it has come down to 20 lakhs. 20 lakhs. Yeah. And uh, from VAT side, it has gone up. Yeah. State VAT side. Yeah. So uh, there was a thing is that. So now, having done that, obviously the SME sector is hit badly here. So there. well since we cannot uh, increase the threshold as per the international level 80 lakhs to 1 crore since we cannot suddenly now from 20 lakhs go up to 80 lakhs so cash in uh, this uh, support this budgetary support for this msme sector is very much needed apart from the richard word issue sir if you remember correctly sir the sizwar notion no no he, sir, he, was, he was here yeah. in india and he talked about another interesting thing 80 lakh threshold for SMEs. Mm -hmm. Of course, he talked about. Apart from that, sir, he also touched that that in any economy, the revenue comes from the big ticket taxpayers. Yes, correct. Like in our case also, right. almost 93 percent, 94 percent revenue yes. is going from only five six percent right. of taxpayers. But major chunk of economic activities, employment generation, contribution to exports, it's contribution to GDP, it's from SMEs, and that is where I think our government is rightly very sensitive, no. uh, and they are trying to do something. If you see yesterday's discussions also. if you can classify all the discussion into three or four categories number one is basic focus was upon procedural simplification for the msme yes, sector right so that their compliance burden reduces correct so one was right. that which they would like to do it by uh, circulars which they would like to do it by issuing mm -hmm. notification mm -hmm. second was was about rate rated notification some okay. other items which are directly affecting msme sector yeah. they will be considering you now as i mentioned fitbit committee will process them which will benefit the, you know the msme sector 
third was which was basically about uh, uh, return filing many of the issues are still raising that issues of return filing as you have seen that last proposal last mm -hmm. meeting they have introduced a new return filing Correct. mechanism right. which will sort out many of the issues that they were mentioning for example supplier not paying to the recipient Correct. our supplier right. does not uh, you know discharge his duty why recipient should be held responsible all these issues are going to place amendment to the return that you have filed right. even though they have raised now these yes. are the issues which are heavily affecting the msme sector all those we presume saying that new return system uh, as well as the law amendments that are proposed uh, with respect to return filing will solve. The fourth one is about law amendments, certain things which probably require law a little bit. So that we are not prioritizing at this stage as already one set of law amendments have already gone through. Correct. They are supposed to go to this uh, you know, uh, pre present parliament session. Right. So what uh, was uh, basically discussed was to ensure and uh, that MSME sector is comfortable here I would like to say that before the meeting, two days before the meeting, our Honorable Finance Minister had a video conference with the uh, uh, small and medium taxpayers from 12 cities. In fact, our DGGST, Director General of GST, has organized this by speaking to the six uh, CGST zones, uh, wherein we have arranged for video conference, wherein we have called at each of these 12 cities, uh, job workers, composition dealers, small traders, small manufacturers, or exporters who had some difficulty. So at each of these two locations, approximately 30 to 70 taxpayers were there. It is the first time that finance minister is directly talking mm -hmm. to the uh, tax you know, tax taxpayers tax through tax video conference. Our officers were also there. And it was uh, with that our finance minister has the first hand information about the uh, issues that are faced by taxpayers. Mm -hmm. With that kind of background, he has uh, come to this particular meeting. He right. has gone through it. As I was mentioning, that second biggest issue that came up for discussion, most commonly that was raised was job work, job work charges. Okay. As that is one that is really hitting many of the people. Okay. Uh, if you have seen some of the rates of the job work charges have been reduced to zero and right. five, right. but there are still some sectors where job work charges are 18 yes. percent, either on the services side or on the goods side. Right. So what you see is my inputs are at a uh, uh, lower rate, my output uh, discharges are lower, but this charge, uh, discharge yes. that I have to do 18 percent is creating percent. a kind of inverted uh, duty structure yeah, or structure. locking right. up of my yeah. uh, revenue there. Correct. So for that uh, there was a discussion yesterday also, they said that job work charges probably should be made in consume rate in comparison to his uh, input and mm. input service here, mm -hmm. so that there is no extra additional discharge of duty has to do or there is no extra accumulation. Even if I make 5 percent, unfortunately if you say no textile sector, my dyes and chemicals, they are mm. coming at 18 percent. Right. My output discharge is the 5 percent. As percent. you have seen Surat in many one of the textile one locations. One of the most important issue I want to just focus on, that is the, uh, we have the lack of um, trained manpower. That is the most important issue. The you MSME, MSME sector, sector you are not going Yes, going yes, okay. yes. MSME sector, they, that is sexist. Okay. So trained manpower is very important. So government should focus on, uh, give them, provide them good training, make aware of our, uh, about the system, how they file uh, all the tax things. No, on that aspect, uh, yesterday one of the discussions was also came, for example, this audit, audit okay. to be conducted. Yes. There is a 35, section 35, 5 says that for uh, your units, taxpayers, class of taxpayers who are above certain particular turnover. The turnover yes. is not different in the yes. section, it can be prescribed by the government. So that they should get their uh, accounts audited by chartered accountant or chartered accountant and submit it to the department. Right. So there was a discussion yesterday saying that uh, for income tax, they are anyway doing this. Yes. For the units turnover, whose turnover is more than 2 crores, they are doing it annually. Right. So instead of doing separately for GST and separately for income tax, just to redden their complaint, right. there was an argument put forward saying that for the units, GST taxpayer units whose turnover is more than 2 crores can get their accounts audited by chartered accountant. The same copy may be submitted to both GST Absolutely. department I as well as that. Right. So uh, some units, some people have said that 2 crores is small, let us make it 5 crores also. Okay. So these kind of discussions are happening still in the uh, right. council okay. as well as with the thing. Right. Probably a decision, this was yes. uh, rightly pointed by yes. because of lack of technical manpower. Mm -hmm. In fact, another issue that was come up was also about the invoices, about the accounts that they have to maintain. Mm -hmm. As you are aware, you know, in the uh, section 31, one provision is also there saying that which says that uh, the kind of invoice to be maintained can be specified by the council for a particular class right. of taxpayers. Yes. So there was an argument tested by some of the state governments that the, there shall be difference between B2B and B2C. B2C. 
yes. B2P invoice is where you can take the credit. Okay. So it shall contain all the details, HSN yes. code, right. uh, our good, are the specific uh, services and all those details because you are taking, recipient is taking credit. As far as uh, some of the MSME sectors, especially on the traders who are there, they may not be, they will be selling it to, let's say they will be uh, supplying it to the B2C. B2C. So whether all those details are required to be here? So there is an heavy argument that you know, there shall be a different uh, classification. Already you have decided on the returns front. So mm -hmm. governments, uh, ah, returns so it has been. So yeah. similar yeah. things should be extended for extended the invoice, to the invoice, invoice system yeah. also. So and there was an argument saying that invoice side also will do it. And another thing that has come up for the job workers is also the ITC 04. ITC 04 mm -hmm. return that mm -hmm. they are supposed mm -hmm. to pay job mm -hmm. workers. They have their own books of account. A job worker, for example, you take on the textile sector. Mm -hmm. A particular fabric comes to him. He does the job work, passes it on to another job worker. One principal will supply to job worker one. As job worker one, I do some pass process, to pass on to job worker two. Mm -hmm. Job yeah, worker absolutely. do something, some process and something. Either he supplies back to principal or he can or even he clear that. Yes. Yes. So to avoid this kind of confusion, the principal is supposed to keep maintaining how many is going to them, how many are coming back. So ITC 04 also, there was a demand earlier. There was particularly it came up for discussion that it required to be simplified, especially for textile sector, especially for gems and jewelry sector. There are two sectors which are heavily affected on ITC 04. Because it is 04 cannot be separately for them, it is 04 is common for all sectors, they are going to simplify that. Mm -hmm. They have mentioned that yesterday also saying that we should have thing. Many people yesterday asked about e -way bill also. e -way bill mm -hmm. is mandatory if the right. goods are above 50,000. Right. So, but for the MSME sector, whether e -way bill uh, can be considered waiver in certain sectors. In fact, if we see for intrastate movement, mm -hmm. many of the state government have already given lot of benefits as far okay. as the e -way Interstate is concerned, the rules are fixed that mm -hmm. above 50,000 of the right. value of course. So what we uh, processed and what was discussed on 28th meeting, GST council in 29th is also there. In case there are only minor offenses, instead of putting heavy penalty right. with respect to the duty evasion, the penalty need not be compared or linked with the amount of tax yeah. involved right. in the goods that is carrying. Suppose somebody is carrying a goods worth around 1 crore, tax involved is around 10 lakh. The, what is the mistake he has done is only not carrying an EVA bill or minor uh, procedural matter. Oh, part B is not filled up. Ah, yes. filled up. Yeah. So these kind of technical uh, uh, mistakes Mind. that they did, mm -hmm. a view was taken in the 20th committee meeting saying that there shall be a standard operating procedure right. which uh, shall prescribe that officers need not be harsh upon putting the uh, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it has to be very specific. And discussion should not be given there. Whether no. one, the, because then there will be whether which one is harsh and which one is soft. Mm -hmm. So very clearly they should say if, if it is a uh, factual matter, if this is a only a procedural thing, so then the penalty will be so So, so the SOP is coming, sir. The SOP, SOP is coming. SOP in fact, what you said, discretion, discretion is saying, should not be there on section the 126, uh, subsection 1, 126, 1, says that, that you should not take any harsh for technical difficulty, but nobody is using that. Mm. That is the reason because act there is a provision, they are going to come out with the SOP. Mm. If this kind of offense is there, probably this kind of decision you mm. can take. This kind of offense right. is there, you will not be harsh. So mm. they are going to come out with the SOP on that. Following that SOP, it will be easy for them. Correct. In Absolutely. fact, sir, you might have seen that we have launched a special drive for exporters point of view, right. drive for refund. Yeah. Have, have you seen that? I mean, yeah. three refund fortnight. Yeah. Yeah. Refund yeah. fortnight. Yeah. 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 And lot of work has been done and as far as central government concern is concerned, we can say CBIC has disposed almost to the extent of around 93 percent yeah, yeah, of the yeah, refunds that are due for that. So there was a view uh, come up uh, yesterday also that uh, probably there can be special drive for a SME sector, uh, mm. MSME sector okay. where they are having some difficulties, right. mainly about refunds and okay. some of the procedural matters also. It would be a fortnight exclusively focusing on the MSME sector, they could have difficulties with them. They could have, we have in fact any of these 21 uh, GST zones, we have what is called CPC, mm -hmm. Central Processing Center, right. we have GST Seva Kendras where people can go and approach. So we are, uh, I think there was a proposal to launch a special fortnight mm -hmm. for the MSME, MSME sector no, also, so that uh, they get a kind of, uh, you know, a special focus during that week. Any grievances that are there also can be processed. Absolutely. So, so maybe, sir, you know, we are running short of time now. So mm -hmm. last yeah. comment, you know, yeah. we'll start with uh, Dr. Sanjeev. Okay, in the last meeting, uh, government has also proposed incentivizing the digital payment okay. also. Okay. That was also one of the uh, means key issues. The MSME was just uh, suffering. 20% incentive was already given and uh, cap was uh, 100 rupees. Yes, sir. So that is a good move, sir. 
It's a good no. You are yeah. welcoming it, but do you yes. have any anything else you want the government to do for you, or you are very happy man? You look very happy now. <laughs> not not happy, but but the thing is that <laughs> government should right <laughs> government should moving in the right direction. Reduce the procedural issue. That is the most that important. That they are working on. Yeah, course. that they are working. Working. simplification process simplification is our top priority. In fact, some of the items are like let's say branded. Yeah. Uh, food items which are branded, uh, you know, there is a higher rate of duty when compared to unbranded. There is a heavy rush now, many of the traders are pushing into unbranded items. So mm. now your view is also one of the rate issues that was listed yesterday to be taken up is that common items, cereals, mm -hmm. you know, food grains. So you're yeah. saying that branded and branded difference, whether should we consider that to be or not? Treatment committee will be coming up with this recommendation. Yes. So that, you know, mm -hmm. that benefit is also given to the common public. I mean, these are the big ticket items which will affect large chunk of yes. taxpayers okay. as well as consumers. Like ultimately, you and me are also consumers. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, the indirect taxation yes. ultimately comes to the consumer. Absolutely. So, yes. government is very keen upon trying to address some major items which can uh, connect large chunk. For example, another one is about principal end agent. As you have seen mm -hmm. 24 uh, subsection That's 1 right. 7, it says saying that if you are an agent of a principal, uh, then you shall register and you will not have even 20 lakhs uh, that benefit also. Correct, correct. So, uh, under 23.2, we can give a notification by which we can say that certain class of taxpayers need not register. Yeah. So, government is seriously considering because these agents are not dealers. Dealer right. is different. Yeah, Dealer absolutely. is that I get your value of goods from a principal. Yes. I raise my invoice, so value of the goods come to me. Whereas I am an agent, mm -hmm. my job is clearing and forwarding, I get only some commission out of it. In fact, Correct. I operate on the principal's invoice. Yes. So that is why it, the view is come up yesterday also saying that this particular agent for his taxable uh, you know, value shall be only the commission, not the mm -hmm. value of course. Even in income tax, there is a separate treatment you know, for the principal to agent relationship yes, and sir. principal to dealer is principal to principal. So, mm. so that manner that we will be going to benefit mm. lakhs and lakhs of agents, mm. especially right. within the state, there is no necessity for agent to register also mm -hmm. because his principal is in the state. In, the same in yeah. fact, he is like another vertical. Right. So, Correct. there is no need for going for another Absolutely. registration. So, a, a view has come up saying that which will benefit large chunk of agents because that uh, is also going to be considered by the law committee. So, they will come up there with proposals. Oh, I am very sure. Yeah. Sir. Okay, okay. In the yeah. you have so, uh, three things I think uh, which can go a long way in, in uh, sort of giving a stimulus to the MSME uh, sector, specifically with respect to compliance because I think that's the biggest uh, pain point. First is if you go, if we go back to July, we started with the com, uh, the composition scheme with a particular threshold. Right. They increased it by 50 lakhs. Then they again increased by 50 lakhs, and they kept on adding taxpayers. Right. So first is, do they have still scope to increase that thre uh, threshold? Okay. Second is, can they extend it to service providers? So the, this is one thing uh, which can actually give a relief to a huge number of taxpayers. Uh, yeah. Second is. Uh, as, as you said, reverse charge mechanism is going to be introduced for notified persons. So make sure that you do not introduce it for MSME. Third is e-way bill for the last consumer sale. Delhi very, very uh, intelligently has exempted e-way bills for the last mile sale to the end consumer. Mm -hmm. Can all the states do it? Irrespective of the sale value, if a retailer if a retailer is selling goods uh, to the unregistered person, Correct. he's doing B2C sales. Correct. Can we wave off way bills, yeah, at least for the interest rates? Yeah, yeah. These are three things which can actually help them, uh, you know, in day-to-day -day activities and go a long way. Okay, yes, sir. I mean, very, so, very uh, uh, tough uh, demand, sir, he has put on the GST <laughs> Council. <laughs> the GST <laughs> Council had taken a view when the revenue was not picking up that the, the actual culprit are the composition dealers. The compliance was very bad. Most of them were reporting only 5 lakhs. What, what, what kind percentage of, of revenue? Composition dealers? Uh, revenue, the wise, revenue wise. Uh, revenue, they are not looking at the revenue present listed, they are looking at the number, the tax base. You know, it's a conflicting situation for the GST council also, whether it's, a, it's a whether revenue versus the tax base, so which one to opt. They are trying to strike a balance, they don't know where the, exactly the balance lies. Okay. So, you know, they are trying to look at that, sir, but this RCM, the 9 4, is going to come where he is putting a demand that it should not be for MSME sector. But that RCM has been retained as part of the law only for this composition dealers. <laughs> so that will be a tough thing to act upon. But maybe, sir, you know, he has a unregistered. Unregistered. RCM is uh, for. No, 9394. 9394 is for 
uh, any kind of uh, certain class of yes. services, certain they can class be of vote, you will have 94 is for the unregistered. Unregistered. Now, in the, the law amendment that is gone to the parliament now, is 94 is being amended, amended. and says saying that on the recommendations of the council, the government for a particular class of taxpayers or particular type right. of goods or services, they can bring in ASEAN. Correct. So, that for whom are they going to use is another that decision. That is which decided by the council, sir. They will, as you rightly said, they can notify a class of taxpayers, they can notify certain goods. Certain goods. You know, see, it's something like uh, CBEC used to do, I mean, depending yes. on this. But as on date, 94 is in advance. Section so 4A, for instance, uh, you notified it. Section 3, for instance. Yes. I mean, so many. So, sir, I mean, your expectations, sir. I mean, I'm something what the, the council must do for the MSME. Any one prescription, so big ticket reform. See, there can't be one. Yes, sir. Should, I mean, <laughs> I mean, what we have discussed, what he has said, but. Uh, so, sir, so he has already said, said sir. So, all those things, I mean, it has to be considered because. Ultimately, we have to see that we are not at the back of my mind. Always, as a as a tax officer, the tax officer should have revenue consideration. At the same time, revenue is not the be all and all and all of the administration. He has to think of employment. He has to think of uh, the, the uh, other aspects of the economy, growth, and all those. And uh, that also growth in uh, uh, lops, not lopsided growth in some areas and some area is absolutely backward. All those things will have to be considered. But. So, all those points will be discussed. I think these are going in the right direction. Right, I had only, uh, suddenly I remembered one quote of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, but not in respect of GST. <laughs> right, <laughs> he was asked, I think it's early 60s somewhere, uh, he was asked, uh, what's your view about, uh, views about democracy? Mm -hmm. So, you know, quick, he said, sir. quickly he said, Democracy is not the best system, right, sir. but other systems are worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will like to put it this way. GST may not be the best system, but other systems are worse. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so we have to see great how we, we can, agree, how agree, we can yes. go further and further and yes, improve it. Absolutely. Yes, yes, so, I mean, let me go to Sir Mr. Rahman. He cannot have a wish list except that you know, more taxes <laughs> yeah. need to be collected for the kitty. So, I will not ask him, sir. You know. But on this note, let me thank my four guests. And, thank you. and thank very you. rightly, thank you. you know, all of them suggested uh, a very vital key takeaways perhaps from this debate is for Mr. Rahman also to go back to the council and the CBIC and, and discuss the, the, the feedback from the ground level is that. Uh, that rightly suggested that the MSME sector, the focus is on the right sector. This one sector, uh, unfortunately, it has suffered a lot in the last 20 years. Its contribution uh, is very substantial to the GDP, to the export segment, uh, uh, to the job creation particularly, which is turning out to be a very contentious issue for the government to deal with, in fact. So, MSME has been uh, uh, particularly contributing to this, the job creation side, and particularly this unskilled, semi-skilled kind of labor force which is not wanted in the very formal sector, MSME takes care of that and MSME takes care of little semi-educated side aspects also. So, uh, they have suffered in terms of, uh, although the CBIC has done a lot of work in terms of refund, maybe a similar drive as rightly suggested to the council and council should immediately act upon that, that whatever the refund could be given back to those the, the, you know, uh, for, for swearing up their working capital because that is where the MSMEs, uh, they don't get uh, uh, very kind assistance from the financial institutions. They don't sanction their loans, etc. It takes time. The interest rate subvention again is not available to everybody. So, working capital is a very serious concern if government of India is very serious, if India is serious about uh, achieving 350 billion dollar uh, the exports target. This is the right time to do something for the MSME because the festival season is coming, the Christmas is coming, they have to gear up and the exports have to pick up. And globally the exports are facing, it's, they're going through very lean and very bad phase because two of the giant economies, the USA and the China, they are indulging in fratricidal war and they are hurting each other in the process. The small players will certainly get bruises. So India should be ready for the bruises. And looking at all these aspects, the MSME particularly, the job worker side, the budgetary support side, all these aspects should be considered. But of course, the prime mover, the prime factor which is going to decide everything is the revenue kitty. How much revenue is there for giving away and that aspect. At this stage, I personally feel that 
the revenue uh, uh, health is not very good. So perhaps it will take some more time, although the center will be very keen. If you, if you look at the poll schedule in the next five, six months, perhaps center would like to give some support and they deserve it also. But whether you have enough resources to do it, that's a larger question. The GST Council will have to find a very realistic answer for that. Thanking you all for watching TLT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.